on my automated task tracker, there's a feature where every single recurring task is automatically added to your task list whenever it's ready to be completed again. So that way it does it while you sleep. You don't have to think about it and your task list will be ready for you to complete whenever you log in. And the way this happens is that anything that's marked as yes is added. Anything that's marked as no is not added. So as you can imagine, this guy is kind of the limit on what you can and can't do. And that's because you can configure pretty much any formula that you want to to be marked as yes, just using a simple if statement. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to manipulate the recurring formula that's currently there in different ways and how to fully customize it into an entirely different thing. All of my task trackers are meant to be 100% customizable. So this will give you really great power and to be able to customize it to meet your needs. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and let's dive in. By default, all the recurring tasks are set to exclude being added on the weekend, and the weekend being Friday and Saturday. So it's entirely up to you if you want to have this or not. Or if you're in a different location where the first day of the week is considered a Monday instead of a Sunday, you might need to edit this to make sure it's adding on Mondays. So right now, I have it set where if today is equal to the first weekday or the seventh weekday, aka in the United States, Sunday and Saturday, then I want it to be no. So even if it does exceed the threshold on those days, then I want it to be still marked as no, so that way it's not added to the tracker. But let's say that I work weekends or I want them to be added anyways. The simplest way is to simply put eight or nine. Since it's only seven days in the week, you'll never have a day eight or a weekday nine. So it will never be marked as no. And that way you don't have to really do any configuration with the formula. So now you can see here we have to add is yes. So since 24 days exceeds the threshold, it's automatically marking as yes, even though I'm filming this on a Saturday. If you want to remove this entirely altogether, all you have to do is just delete this portion right here. So you only want to have one if statement. Delete that last close parentheses and press enter. And now it does the same exact thing, but there is no condition for any weekdays whatsoever. Now, what if you wanted to not exclude weekdays, but you didn't want it to actually be added on the weekday instead? What you could do is you could create a button where whenever you press it, it adds the recurring tasks. But if you don't press it, it won't. Let me show you how to do this. So we're going to go to extensions, app script. And then we have this recurring task right here. And the function of this task is called copy recurring task. Now, typically we have a trigger set up on the live version that automatically runs that task every single day. If we don't want to have that, you can delete the trigger from running every single day. So we're gonna to go to our task list. And then right up here, we're going to go to insert drawing. I'm gonna select a shape. So let's say I wanna have this shape right here. Inside here, I'll put recurring. Let's make it a yellow color, I guess. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. Now you can reformat it based off of wherever you want it to fit. Perfect. We're gonna go back to our app script and copy the name of that task. Make sure you're copying the recurring and not the timestamp one. And then click into it, click on the three little dots and click assign script and paste that. Hit OK. And now once you press it, it will try to run that script. You'll need to authorize it to run the first time. So go ahead and authorize it. Go to advanced and continue. Perfect. So now it's authorized. And now whenever you press that button, anything that's marked as yes over on the recurring tab will automatically be added to the bottom of your list. So now if I go back to my recurring tasks, you can see that we have everything added today. I'm filming this on the 12th. And everything that was marked as yes is now marked as no. And everything that was marked as yes originally is now at the bottom of the task list. So it's still automated. It's not fully automated where it's being added when you sleep. But if you don't want to deal with weekends or anything like that, this is a great option for you. All you have to do when you log in in the morning, simply click on recurring. And anything that's marked as yes will automatically be added to the bottom of your list. If there is nothing that's marked as yes, it will run through the cycle. It might take a while. So you can just hit cancel if nothing gets added. On my recurring test, every single one of these results is all based off of this formula right here. So let's say you want to make it where there's different formulas for different types of situations. So by default, you want to have this formula right here. But you also want to have another formula where it will add that specific task on the same day every single month regardless of how long it's been since the last time it was completed. What we can do is we can change this from an array formula. So delete array formula, change that to I2, change that to J2, change that to A2, delete that last close parentheses and press return. So now it's only going to execute that formula for one column. Let's go ahead and drag this down to the end of the table. And now we can edit one specific item. So for example, let's say that we want to have it where on the 12th of every month it gets added, no matter how long it's been since the last time it was added or anything like that. We can delete the formula that's there. I went ahead and changed the last added date to the date last month. Doesn't matter what day it is, as long as it's last month, it'll work. The reason why I'm doing last month is because it will only be added once a month and we want it to be added on the 12th. So with the formula, I'm going to type equals if, open parentheses, today, 
open parentheses, close parentheses, is greater than or equal to EO month, open parentheses, and EO month stands for end of month. So like the day of last added, put a comma, zero. So it's gonna take the last day of the month for the date that is selected here in I3. And then we'll put plus, and then however many days you want. So for example, I can put 12, and then if today is above that date, then we're going to return yes. Otherwise, we're going to return no. So you can see right here, we have a yes, and that's because today is July 12th. So it does match the criteria, which is 12 days past the last day of the month, which is June 30th, which would be July 12th. Now, if I were to put 13 instead, you can see it turns to no. That's because today's not July 13th yet. Once tomorrow rolls over, then it will be added to yes. If I were to go the other way and had 11 instead, it will be marked as yes because the 12th is past the 11th. So if you're not familiar with the EO month formula, like I said, all it is is we're taking the date. So we're gonna say EO month, select whatever date you want it to be, put a zero, and it's going to return the last day of the month. So you can see right here, if I drag this formula down, it's gonna reference some of these other dates. So we have the 630, then we also have 731. So it's always going to return the last day of whatever month for the date it's selected. And then all we're doing is adding. So this plus 12, July 12th. So once again, July 12th, today is greater than or equal to July 12th. That's why it's being marked as yes. Otherwise, if it's not exceeding that date, it will be marked as no. All right, so now what if you have a deadline that's recurring and you want the task to trigger two weeks ahead of time, one week ahead of time, and so forth. It's always based off of whatever date that is. Let me show you how to do this. And this will be a little bit more involved just because we need to change the configuration a little bit. So I'm gonna right click here. I'm gonna put event. This will be what the event is that you're trying to go based off of. Go ahead and add some more columns over here to the right. And I don't want the alternating colors to apply there. So I'm going to change this back to Q, make that smaller to fit. And then now let's add some new alternating colors and we'll make it this green color. So in S1, I'm gonna type event. And then in T1, I'm gonna put date. So the date is going to be the date that the event's going to occur. The event is going to be the event name. For T1, I'm gonna select the cells, go to data, data validation, add rule, is valid date, and hit done. Now by doing this, I'm able to simply double click on the cell and add the date from the pop-out calendar instead of having to type it in manually. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the 19th and then I'm going to head and put the 8th. And then let's say event one, event two. All right, now in column L, we're gonna click on the caret, go to edit column type, drop down, drop down from arrange, click the four little boxes, click into the pop-out, and then select every single event option from column S. So I'll go all the way through the end of column S in case anything gets added later on. But we have S2 through S, hit okay. You can give it colors if you want to, but you don't have to. All right, so now I can simply click on the drop down and select event one, and event two. Just like last time, we can make a custom calculation to whether we want to have something marked as yes or no. Anything marked as yes is going to be added to the task tracker. Anything marked as no is not. So you can do whatever kind of formulas you want. You can say if today equals Wednesday, then add it. If not, then don't. You can do whatever. So let's go ahead and make some custom formulas. Instead of having days since last right here being calculated, we're simply going to put however many days ahead we want it to be. So let's say for example, for this event, we want this one to be 14 days ahead. We want this one to be seven days ahead. And then for event two, we want this to be 14 days ahead as well. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna type equals if open parentheses the day open parentheses close parentheses is greater than or equal to x lookup. And we're going to look up this value from column S, and then we're going to return column T. We'll put a comma after, so that way it's blank and nothing's found, and close that out. So right now it's saying if today is greater than or equal to X lookup, L4, then we're looking up event one from the event list, and then we're returning the date. Now, we don't want this to be exact because we don't want it to be after the date. We want it to be before the date. So I'm gonna put a open parentheses before X lookup. And after the X lookup formula, I'm gonna put a minus. And then we're going to subtract however many days we have since last that we just added. In this case, it's 14. So it's gonna be 14 days ahead of that date. All right, so that's our formula. Now, if it's true, we want it to return yes. If it's false, we want it to return no. You can see right here we have yes. And that's because today's date is within 14 days from that event date. So it's going to be yes. Now if we were to double click on this and let's change this to 14 days out, it'll still work. 14 days from today is the 26th. If I change this to the 27th, now you can see it's no, and that's because we're not within 14 days of that event. So once tomorrow rolls around and the event is within 14 days, this will automatically flip to yes, and it will be added to your task tracker just like it normally would. Now you can drag this formula down and it will do the same exact thing. Only difference is it's referencing different days. So we're looking up event one still, so that's the same date. 
we're not within seven days, so that's why that's not working. And then same thing for event two, we're not within 14 days, so that's why that's not working. Now if I were to change this back to the 19th, you can see now this is slipped as yes, this is slipped as yes. In reality, this would have been added seven days ago, but that's just proving that this does work because it's seven days from today. Then if I were to change this to two weeks out, you can see that's marked as yes. Or if I want it to be three weeks out, for example, change this to 21, you can see it's working exactly as we want it to. And it's super easy to adjust this threshold to meet whatever you want it to be. So if you want it to be three weeks in advance, two weeks in advance, one week in advance, six months in advance, whatever it is, same concept, same formula, just different amounts ahead of time. So let's say after this happens, your next event's not until September. All you have to do is mark it to September 20th, for example, and then that formula is already set up, the event's already set up. Whenever today reaches 14 days ahead of that date, it will automatically be switched to yes and it will be added to your task list. So that's a few different custom recurring formulas that you can do. The sky's the limit here, because like I said, as long as it's marked true under certain situations, that's all that really matters. Whenever it's marked as true, it will be moved to the task list. If it's not marked as true, it will not be moved to the task list. So you can do whatever formulas you want here, and then every single day, it will be added to the task list. If you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. Let me know if you have any questions, and like and comment for more.